Sure. Jeff has a very long one. Yeah. 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 Guys, winded. Can you can you I hear have me? I okay? ticket. Good. Would you read it aloud? Uh, I woke up the other day with uh, um, one sentence in my head, banging. banging around my head. God talks to the others only in dreams. Thank you, Julie. I bring you tissues, you bring me dreams. It's a good deal. Which paragraph are you in? <laughs> good. <laughs> I, I did forget to number them. Sorry about that. Well, I don't know if that's the right word, but you know how you wake up and you've got that... That's the last thing on your mind while you were dreaming? Is this, is this mm-hmm. thought? Yeah, the effect it had on you? Yeah. Um, an instant effect of uh, puzz- puzzlement. What? Come on, more. Um, As I thought more about it, it had. Are you looking for just the instant effect, or what I thought about it, how I judged it? Uh, I had two problems with it. Well, two. Go ahead. One is. Um, that I don't personally believe that to be the case. And the other is. When did you get that idea? Afterwards. Okay, then it would. Well, I, beforehand, I, it's like... Um, I don't believe it. I, I don't believe it, yeah. I don't believe huh? it. Like... Um, what part don't you believe? Uh, it, it would mean that during any other time besides dreaming, we have no connection with the divine. And uh, that's why I don't find it tenable. Um, but on the other hand... But that, but that doesn't say that. The divine, it just says God? No, no, no. That statement. Why does it preclude anything, uh, any other... Because of the word only? It depends upon how, how that word is being used. What are you seeing? Well, this is saying that this God, uh, there's two problems. Let me leave the, the first one aside, go to the second. God talks only in dreams. Doesn't preclude that he doesn't in some way, uh, in some way communicate, relate to others and other, other than in dreams. Just as it just talks. Yeah, you know what's interesting is that you underline that because I actually forgot that word and I'm not entirely sure that that's the right verb. Well, let's even make it more complex. <laughs> okay. What does this, what does to this others. do to that statement? So, it, exactly. I sort of, I want to take it like, like if you want to think a little bit like in a Parmenidean way, what is another except, I mean, one way to think of another is, well, there's lots of, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, does another have a self? Does another have consciousness? Uh, at, at which hypothesis do you want to work out of? Um, could another even hear what God says? See, this statement can mean other than you. Yeah, no, I didn't... It can go in many ways, just like 
The word right. only can go on in many ways. It's up to you. And the other thing about this is that I am not sure whether there was a the between the two and the others. The problem is I wanted to record it and I got lazy. I didn't wait. I waited until the morning. But there might be a the between talk, like talks to the others. Yeah, it's here. Hmm? The others. It should be the others. Okay, so uh, talks to the others. So, um, yeah, does it include me or not? Is it referring to others that way? No. Um, I did not take it that way I, I at the time. Yeah. No. But maybe that's... So there are, there are several puzzles in it, but the question really is the effect it had you on you in the dream, not after. Well, you know, this this was actually um, right as I was reading about um, the Neoplatonists and the influence of theurgy mm -hmm. and the Chaldean oracles, right the day before. Mm -hmm. So, the, uh, yeah. there, okay, so puzzlement was half of it. The other half of it was it just seemed right. Hmm. And both of those were at the same time. What's that like, seems right? Uh, it's the same as... Um, um, it's um, it's like justice, hmm? justice, justice. Mm -hmm. Like it's just. Huh? Well, you asked me what it's like. Yeah, I think the word justice in the sense that we talked about last week. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I from the Republic, right? Mm -hmm. um, how it relates in Zen Buddhism. Yes. Right? Um, okay. Let's now go back to this statement. Uh, yes, it is true. Literally. Now we don't go literally. Talk. I wasn't sure whether it was, that's because the one word that was missing. I'm not sure if it was talks or speaks or communes with or... Well, I, it, it, <laughs> the big question is, even if you put communion with, uh, it's in dreams and dreams are words. Like this is, it's in words. Images, true, but there has to be an intellectual content to dreams or it wouldn't be reported. So that's true. Therefore, it's only in dreams that you can hear the voice of God. Okay. And that seems right. That's justice. It's also puzzling, depending upon now how you go back and look at this expression. Mm -hmm. What does that do? I took it literally. See, this could be God talks to others only in dreams. Uh, but he doesn't need to talk to angels. Either when they are awake or in dreams. <laughs> I 
I guess I don't follow the... What part did you take literally? I guess I... God talks to others only in dreams. Yeah. Well, that says the others are people like you and people, humans. Right? And I'm saying, he also let us say there are uh, other intelligent beings. Right. Yep, yep. And these he can be communicating without talk. Without? Without talking. Oh, I see. So there are a class that he talks to only in dreams, and then another class he could and that presupposed either that talk to at other times or communicate in some other way. Yeah. Uh, I'll buy that. Yeah. Unless... Unless we preserve the word the mm -hmm. to the others, that makes it harder to divide into two okay. classes. Um, but you could still do it. You could say the others than the others yeah. or something. Yeah. I, I really just took it as all others than God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like basically everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, with it. you like that state of justice, huh? Yes, but it's very in it's weird to be. Yes, I do. Do it again. But it's weird to be in that state along with a state of puzzlement. On that's right. That's a very interesting. Sure is. That's an addition. So now you have to try your best to say, what, were you, what was it you were puzzled about? All of this stuff we've been chewing on. <laughs> huh? I would, well, that's not fair. You've brought a lot. Okay, so what was I puzzled about? In the dream. I don't know, because this is just as I woke up. It's, bang, it's like this is what, what's ringing in my head as I wake up. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm trying to just... You could be puzzled that you got it. Uh, it can go many, many ways, right, with being puzzled. Like, wow! Well, the thing is, I was puzzled like a koan puzzles you. Okay. All right. It, it doesn't have... Um, like, I can't answer it 42 or something. It... it, it, it it had a, it, a, a, a rightness to it, but also um, isn't that interesting that it has a it has a rightness to it a just mm -hmm. it is perfect or whatever or just so but at the same time, for me to say that I am puzzled about it means by definition I'm disconnected in some way from a full experience or full understanding of it because that's mm -hmm. why I'm puzzled. So how can those two... No, that, that, that may be true in past puzzles. The question is whether it was true in this one, just to make sure. Because I think you could be puzzled that you got it. You could be puzzled about the content. You could be puzzled, puzzled about landing in, in such an interesting state of mind. There are a lot of things you can be puzzled. Well, we also have not explored opening up the word dreams. True. Because if you take dreams in a wider context of consciousness, then it, it does seem very right, and it felt that way at the time. Hmm. Um, like... Um, Like, like you've talked about, hey, let's, let's explore daydreams. Yeah. And uh, well, then tell anybody me who looks at themselves for a little amount of time knows that even in the daytime they're dreaming. Yeah, yeah. We're dreaming all the time. Yeah. So it, it's saying, and it's, the part that seems right about it is that um, I'm going to have to bring myself to a different level mm -hmm. 
to get the message yeah. than I have been operating at. Up but see, now. in one sense, you already have it. You know, it's like the colon puzzle. Mm. Okay, answer it. Okay, what kind of tone came with that statement? Oh, that's another good Okay, tone. Emphasis. Uh, my mother's. A statement of fact. But not, not, there's not, there isn't emotion in it. It's, um... It's almost, it's not like it's human, it's, uh, somehow my mother comes to mind, but that tone is not hers, it's just a statement of, um, it's like what is. Yeah, but it's a statement of fact about something divine. Yes. But the tone is um, untraceable. Mm -hmm. Un, yeah. Pardon me? It's untraceable, the tone is, there is no tone. If it's a statement of fact, can it be a koan? <laughs> Is that a koan too? Yep. <laughs> Go ahead. It, it reminds me of uh, this question that you asked us last Friday night in front of the women's club before we opened up. You asked us, uh, um, what kind of thinking requires a proper object? Uh, answer. I've been working on it all week. I can't. <laughs> I even put it on my door at work. I, I go by and I stare at that door all day long before I go back in. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what's happening to you? <laughs> God, getting, getting divine dreams and, and getting koan puzzles and getting uh, states of mind and of justice. What's happening? What's happening to you? That is... Um Something going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Go on. Voila. Donald. All right. Uh, I had this this morning. Uh, I felt young, childlike. Mm. and told my dad, who was also young, or a, mm. a young man, uh, that the human eye resembles the one, the pupil, and the brilliant light of being, the iris. My dad, um, in a loving way, a loving and caring way, said, where were you when I was studying? It was either studying or writing. The and it was some big word I never heard of. And uh, he hugged me and kissed me uh, with a loving emotion, and it felt awesome. Mm. That was a dream. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Um.
What do you make of it? Um, well, what pops out to me is the, the eye resembling the one in my mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, the, the center, the circle with the center, which is dark, and then around it is the, the, the light, the color, the beauty. And that is also what we see through. Um, they say the windows of the soul. So why couldn't our eyes be like the one? Yeah, what was that like? It was a... Uh, It was like a, like an epiphany. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, almost like so so easy that that it could be true. So mm -hmm. simple. Mm -hmm. No. And then your dad hears this? Yeah, it's a... Uh, and then he says this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you make of it? Well, that, uh, that state that my dad was in, it would be hmm? probably the, the hypoxis of, of, of how he was to us. Yeah. On certain cases. What does it mean? I have no idea. Yeah, stay with the words. <laughs> stay with the words. Read, read what Dad says. Where were you when I was studying or writing mm -hmm. the big name? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It was like I could help him. What way? With his shoes on? <laughs> with my, with huh? my insightfulness. Hmm. Therefore, what role would you be playing in the dream at this point? A knower. Well, got a name? Um... I can spell a little bit. What name should I put on this? What role again did you say? A teacher? What? A teacher? Uh, of shoemaking. <laughs> of, um, of the divine? Oh, what name do we call those dudes? Um, help me out, Pierre. Well, I didn't hear you. <laughs> help me out. No, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> Teacher and student. What kind of teacher did you say? <laughs> teacher of the divine. Of what name do they give those dudes? Um, a Kuros or a Iotromantis or a, 
Um, See, it's when he was doing all this studying, right? Mm -hmm. And whatever else that is engaged in at that time, which you know. And he's saying, where were you when I was... Yeah. And what state of mind is he in when he says that? He's in a huh? great state of mind, like in the right? great. peak, yeah. Appreciative, mm -hmm. right? And you? Oh, I was in a great... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giving yeah. state of mind. Uh, did you say what kind of teacher I was? Um, a teacher... An intuitive teacher? Pardon? An intuitive teacher? Intuitive? Yeah. Uh, yeah, into the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't place the name. I just can't get it. I'm that's, sorry. That's it's okay, okay. It's just that we both don't believe you. <laughs> Right? Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Oh, why is it important to put it on? That's why you got the dream. Go ahead. Enlightened? Pardon? Enlightenment. Oh, oh. One of those teachers of, what was that show? The Enlightenment. Ah, do they have names? Um. <laughs> gurus. Oh, guru. One of those gurus. Ah. A teacher of enlightenment. Ah. And through, and it must be through the mind, right? Because that's what she's into, mm -hmm. right? So mind is playing a major role in this cookie. So you're a special kind of girl. Through what? Through the mind, right? Oh. And you call that awesome. Yeah, yeah, it yeah great. Yeah, 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 yeah. You appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Could you read it now? Yes. Could you just read it once more? Yes. I can um, easily tell you as long as I'm not doing it. Okay. <laughs> um, I felt young, childlike and told my dad, who was a young man also, uh, that the human eye resembled the one, the pupil, and the brilliant light of being, the iris. My dad, uh, in a loving and caring way, said, where were you when I was studying or writing uh, the big name? I don't know what it was. Uh, and hugged and kissed me with loving emotion, and it felt awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's find out why. Come on. Uh, what were you going to ask? Um, A good way I start that way myself. Uh, where were you? <laughs> um, Did I you ever answer? Where was I? Yeah, when he was studying the big name. Uh, it was just a, a scene where I was, um, I was like, I looked up, and my dad was young, and I said, hey, dad, and I told him that, and then in a loving, caring way, like, like a grandmother or grandfather would look at their grandchild, would, uh, he, he came with me like, with that love.
Right. I said, where were you when I was studying? When I was studying this, like I could help him with with what he was trying to do. Like you could have helped him back could when he was him. studying. Yeah. So did you answer the question where you were, where you'd been? I was just a kid. In, in the dream, I was like a child. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. Good. So it's kind of a rhetorical question. Uh, rhetorical question? Yeah. He didn't really want an answer. Yeah, it was just like I, I had an idea. Yeah. And, and he appreciated the idea and said, where were you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll take a break for a few minutes. Okay, so we'll take the camera in. I was in mom's womb. I wasn't born yet. Or I don't know. I, yeah. I was in school. I don't know. Yeah, in Brooklyn. Somewhere. Where were you? What was your Brooklyn. face before your parents were born? Maybe the bathroom. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, except for the next three reads that I need some help on this, so get ready to answer questions. All set? <coughs> I'm driving. <laughs> I'm driving the Toyota to pick up some family at my aunt's house. When I get there, I'm trying to pull up in front of the house, but I miss and I go too far. I totally miss. Uh, so then I stop and I'm like, okay, then I'll just reverse it into that spot. I'm also thinking whether or not they saw me do, it, do that. They might think I'm stupid. So then I'm trying to reverse it, but I miss again by a very large margin. I end up on the wrong side of the road. It's weird. So then I start going forward again. Now I'm going down the hill and away from the house. I'm pretty far away now. I keep going. And then I'm in kind of a downtown area. Driving around the blocks, it seems like I'm looking for something. Going around and around. And then I realize that the brakes are not working. I try it again, and I really step on the pedal with all my force. But the car almost doesn't slow down at all. So then I decide that the best way to stop is probably to use the handbrake and to spin the car so that it stops that way. And then to just jump out when the car is moving slowly. So I try the handbrake, and it does work a little bit. And then I'm looking for a turn or a place where I can do this maneuver. So I turn around the corner and I do it. I keep turning the wheel and the car spins out as I'm pulling the handbrake. As it's almost stopped, I jumped out, jump, as it's almost stopped, I jump out of the car. Then I see that the car has actually stopped completely because there's also an incline and it's just kind of stuck in that position. So now the car is in the center of the road, stuck there. It's kind of parked on a diagonal in the middle of the road. So then I'm walking around and trying to figure out where I am so that I can call my mom or somebody and tell them where I am so that they can pick me up. I'm trying to find the street signs of the crossroads, but I can't find them. So I ask somebody, I ask them, What's the name of this place? Where are we? The guy doesn't seem to know exactly, but he's trying to help me figure it out. He doesn't really help me. For some reason, I'm in a bar now. I'm still trying to figure out where I am so that I can call somebody to pick me up. I notice a tip jar on top of a slot machine. There are ones and a couple of fives in there. Some notes fell out of it, and then I was picking them up to put them back. But then I thought, oh, I can probably use this for calling somebody. Then I'm looking at them, then I'm looking at them, and I put back the ones, and I take a five, thinking, it's all right, it's kind of an emergency, I can bring it back later. Some guy sees me, and he's he's like, "Mm, are you looking for change? He's obviously suspicious about me stealing, so I say yes because I don't want to explain the whole thing to him.
There are all these weird bar characters <laughs> around that are just annoying. But somebody points me to a guy who's apparently the manager. He seems a cut above the rest, so I sit next to him to ask him if he can help me. And he totally didn't want to help me. He gives me all this bullshit. Finally, after a while, I cut through the bullshit and I ask him if there's a phone I can use. He thinks and thinks about it and then reluctantly says, all right, and gets me to follow him. I'm walking behind him and he opens a door to a back office and as we go in, a couple of people are following us. I'm trying to shoo them away as we're going deeper inside. They look like they're just some nosy people. Finally, we get to some room and he points over there. To, uh, and the two people are coming in as well. He was pointing to the phone. The guy gives me a phone and I sit down. Now I'm trying to get my aunt's <laughs> hey, nuts. Uh, the, the guy gives me a phone and I sit down. Now I'm trying to get my aunt's number from my phone so I can put it into the other phone. Uh, one, of the people, <laughs> one of the people who came in with us is sitting across from me at the table and he makes some comment in German. I comment back in German, matching him, and he's surprised. Then he asks the manager, who is he calling? Then I say, my aunt, what are you, the Uber boss? He, he laughs and says, yeah. Then I say, my aunt, in German. We have a little back and forth banter as I'm fiddling with the phone. We have a little back and forth banter in German as I'm fiddling with the phone. Uh, now the boss gives me a business card with the name of the club and the address on it. And I'm like, ah, yes, thank you. So then I call and my dad picks up. I tell him the story and he starts laughing. <laughs> I'm, I'm sighing, thinking, okay, now I've got to wait for him to stop laughing. Waiting for it to be over with. Then my mom's on the phone and I'm spelling the name of the bar to her. Mm -hmm. The spelling is very difficult. She gets it wrong and I have to repeat. She's complaining about how hard it is. Then I said, don't worry about it, that's just the name of the bar. Then I'm looking for the business card with the address and I can't find it. And I'm like, ugh. Then the German boss is next to me and I ask him, where's that address again? Can you point to it? Then he flips a business card and then he points to it. And it, ha and it has all the info. I say, danke. And he nods. I start trying to give her the address, but I'm having trouble focusing. So I say, listen, I'm just going to text you the address right now so that I don't have to spell it. And then we hang up. And then I'm fumbling with it, trying to send her a message. But it's still like I keep losing the card. It's like I can't hold on to the situation. It keeps slipping away from me. What are you going to do with it? Well, mm -hmm. when I first uh, yeah. was reflect... Yeah, what is... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what are we going to do? Oh, how are we going to proceed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, For me, the first paragraph seems to be the key. Good. Go ahead. Um, it, it seems like... Yeah, read it. Okay. I'm driving the Toyota to pick up some family at my aunt's house. When I get there, I'm trying to pull up in front of the house, but I miss and I go too far. I totally miss. So then I stop and I'm like, okay, then I'll just reverse it into that spot. I'm also thinking whether or not they saw me do that. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the key. Mm -hmm. Should I keep reading? No, well, um, 
I like that. So what do you make of it? Well, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's very uh, familiar to me that when I, I worry about what, how people perceive me, Mm-hmm. that things start to fall out of my hands and I lose the brakes, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So th- that's, how, that's, how does it end? Um, it, it just gets worse and worse. Read it. Last, last line. The first paragraph? Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought... Okay. So then I start going forward again. Oh, what does that mean? Well, um, the, the goal was to pick them up, not to keep going. So I, it means that I um, am losing control of the car. Mm. Mm. So control is an interesting word. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do you make of it? Well, it do you see that repeating itself? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's like everything is slippery and I can't hold on to anything. Yeah. It's just like... Yeah. See, when a dream uses multiple scenes to explain the same point, then that point has a manyness and it's not just singular. Right? So if that's the case, uh, there's something that's the same throughout all of these, right? Mm-hmm. But yet there's a difference. And uh, those differences you know, pull together into a unity. Then you understand loss of control in, different, in a new way. I like it, well, but I don't. I don't see it. Well, you could go to the conclusion of each one of those paragraphs and see what happened. What happened? Well, uh, it's like um, it's like the goal. The goal keeps getting further and further away. F- Good f- from me. Good. Go ahead, more. And. <coughs> I, f- I find very creative ways of solving the problems along the way, but it's it's uh, it keeps getting away. Mm-hmm. Do any of them solve it? In the dream? No. Oh. Well, I mean, I, I didn't check everything. Yeah, but you're. Yeah, okay, take them on and out. Take them on and out. So in a way, um, five is very important because it has multiple levels. Read it. For some reason, I'm at a bar now. I'm still trying to figure out where I am. That's it. This should be, where am I at with all of this going on? Like, what does this mean? Where am I? That all of these take, are taking place in the dream. Like, what is it to be a loss of control, or the goal 
going uh, further and further away from you, uh, trying creative ways to solve something, but it doesn't solve them. That's an interesting point, isn't it? Using that as a, on a higher level. Read it again. I'm still trying to figure out where I am. No. Yeah, where are you? See? But um, I, I don't quite understand how you mean that, because I, it's referring to the location, no, but you're not. talking about... No, it's not. This whole thing is asking, where are you? What are you? What's going on? And things are, what would you say? In, in losing control, losing on your goal, getting help in a curious way from curious people. And you have the idea, do you not, that you will be able to solve this. Yeah. Well. I mean, I'm... <laughs> yeah. I have... Idea, ideas along the way to solve the small problems, but I'm not addressing the biggest problem. Right, fine. Uh, yeah. Where are you going? What does that mean for you? To you? Hmm. Mm. Like, you're not in charge. All of these things are happening. To you, around you, agree? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's like I'm not the captain of my ship. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm just kind of in reaction. Yeah, you could use that and put it on a ship and see it. Yeah. It's like everything is breaking down. Yeah, and the storm is just like knocking yeah. me around. Yeah. yeah, I'm not even sure of my goal anymore. Yeah. Right? I left my navigation papers up in the port and forgot about them. And yeah, the... exactly. Right? The ship is leaking. And yeah. <laughs> what state of mind is that in throughout this? Come on. In which one of these do you experience it most intensely? At the very end of the dream. Okay. All right. Go ahead. What state of mind is at nine? The, there's a there's a sense of urgency. There's a sense of urgency, and it's. At the same time, there's a there's a um, a sense of ambiguity. It's like uh, I'm 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 skipping over everything. I'm not doing things thoroughly. I'm trying to kind of. Um, It's like when you, when I when you read something and you just skim over the you don't really look at everything you just kind of skim a surface level and um yeah that's good good um uh, come on um put all of these together 
by surface level skimming over, yet it's an urgency, there's an ambiguity. I'm not really doing anything here. I have count, there's a counter force going on here. Um, surface level skimming over, yet there's an urgency, there's an ambiguity. Uh, put more words on that. Hmm. Sloppy. Hmm? Sloppy. Sloppy. Yeah. More. Uh. <laughs> Actually, my mom has a good word for this. Uh, it's like a hurricane. Go ahead. Because? Because it's like... Uh, it's, it's very fast and very windy and everything's flying everywhere mm -hmm. and there's no, there's no focus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's just... Uh, yeah, right. no focus. It's a, no. it's a disaster. <laughs> it's a disaster. It's a total disaster. Um, and that's that's a state of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like It's like what? Back home. Where does it go? It's when Ah, when I'm when I'm working on a project like building something out of wood, um, the closer I get to the finish, the more I go into this state. Uh, Like I start off wanting to do everything perfectly and sanding the wood and doing mm -hmm. everything with integrity. Mm -hmm. But then I start to cut corners, mm -hmm. <laughs> cut corners. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, tr like trying to cheat. It's like I'm trying to cheat my way to the finish line as quickly as possible. No. There's a sense of scarcity. Uh, Where'd that state come from in your past? Come on, you got it. How old are you? Mm. Got to get through as soon as possible have to finish it as fast as I can. It's kind of cheating and finding shortcuts. To, right, there's a certain franticness to that, right? You know. Yeah. How old are you? Well, I'm, I'm just going to go with this. It, it's, um, I, I have this scene in my mind of... Uh, my parents used to send me to Islamic school mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. seven. Yeah, I guess seven. Um, and one day I... Actually, sorry, this is later. This is like when I was... Um, Wait a second. I'm, I think I'm mixing two scenes. Uh, it's okay. Separate them out. You can do it. Well, the, the one that came to mind first was I was actually uh, um, maybe... What? 11? 16. 16. Good. That's yeah. late. Yeah, 16. Bye. 
and and um, it, it, it was an Islamic school. It was um, it was Ramadan, uh, the the special day in where we my 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 mom wants me to go to the mosque for that day. And I've locked myself in my room and I'm saying, I don't want to go. <laughs> and I'm, um, I've locked the door and I'm, I made up my mind that I'm not going to go because I think it's stupid. And she's banging on the door really loud and she's losing her shit. She's just... I think she's like, she damaged her hands. That's how hard she was banging on the door. And she was uh, screaming like, you have to do what I say. This is my house. And um, uh, yeah. And then uh, she just went so crazy that I just went just so she wouldn't like kill herself or kill me mm -hmm. I mean so you went I went yeah it worked yeah it did now what was that like I hated it mm -hmm. it was uh, yeah 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 It was, mm -hmm. I felt really, like, I lost, like I lost. I, I felt defeated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in a way, I, I thought it was the, the right thing to do, because she was insane. But... At the same time, I lost the battle, so I didn't feel good about that. No. Um, so uh, that put an end to your school. Um, th this was like ten years earlier. Okay, it's a different. But, like, after this happened, she kind of, like, apologized, sort mm -hmm. of. Uh, but, and, and yet she, actually she said, you, you don't ever, you don't have to go anymore. I'm never going to make you do it again, yeah. but yeah. I just had to do it yesterday or something. It didn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So, so this is kind of like um, uh, her state is is that state. That's right. There it is. At its worst. Yeah. Surface level. Yet it's a hurricane. Sloppy urgency. Ambiguity. It's all there. Yeah. Like like she she lost. Um, she was she was literally insane. Yeah. At that time, yeah. she didn't know what she was doing. Yeah. I think she actually like permanently damaged her hands. <laughs> like, I mean, she never would say that, but I think she did. Um, yeah, I, I can, I can, I can feel it. No, yeah. it's I can feel it now. It's very. Um, it Dis works. Disconnected. Yeah, it worked. It worked. Yeah, you end up with the feelings. But I didn't have those feelings on that day. But I did have them on another day. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh man. Got one? Yeah. I was um <laughs> I 
Um, this, I think, was around the same time. Maybe a little later. Where I experienced her state of mind. And I was, um, I was sitting on the, the living room floor and my dad, I was sitting on the living room floor, there was a couch and then my dad was behind the couch. And he was, he was like barking at me and barking at me, doing one of his usual um, I don't even know what to call it, his usual barking. Sure. But he was just being really um, intense about like prodding me. He kept, he kept pushing me and kept um, putting me down and insulting me and all these kinds of stuff. And then um, And then, like, I kept, I kept getting, I kept getting more and more angry, sit, just sitting there, mm -hmm. just taking it. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, in the next, in the next, like, moment, I don't even know what happened, but, like, like I said, there was a couch between us, but suddenly I was on top of him mm -hmm. and I had his head in my hands and I was gonna do something really bad mm -hmm. and I, I have no I still have no memory of um, how, I moved from one to the other. how I got there <laughs> uh, and then like I, all of a sudden I'm there and I see the look in his face of shock and there wasn't even time for terror, just shock. And then that shocked me. And then I was just like, whoa. And I, wa I kind of, I walked out of the house mm -hmm. because I was mm -hmm. scared of, I didn't mm -hmm. want to be there. It was dangerous to be there. Similar between yeah. father and father. Yeah. Now, what did you uh, walk away with? And the other scene, you hated it. Uh, you felt lost and defeated. What did this do to you? It, that hmm? I took on her role. Hmm? I took on her role. I did the same thing that she did. Yeah. I lost it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, why do you think this is coming up now? Because uh, we don't see yet uh, what you want to do. We see how this could bring you into staying on a certain level, surface level, skimming over, sloppy, right? Ambiguity, leave, living with an ambiguity. You mean like what I want to do as a goal? Yeah. Yeah, and are you doing it? Or are you doing it on a surface level? What did this teach you? I'm doing it on a surface level. Hmm? I'm doing it on a surface level. Yeah, but you see, why does it turn out that that would keep you on a surface level? Would you agree that one thing is clear? You saw your power. That's true. And it scared you. Yep. 
Well, what scared right. me was that I didn't control it. I had no... You did control it. Okay, that's true. On one level, you didn't. On another uh, it, level, you did control right. it. Right, right. But you walk away with the sense that you didn't. No, you did control it. But maybe control is the wrong word. Yeah. Yeah, but nonetheless, it's, it's pretty good. Like, what did you do with your mother? What? Were you in control when you uh, opened the door and decided to... Yeah. No. Uh, when you saw the position you got your dad in in that fight, were you in control? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, in I was in complete control. That's right. Uh, but you carry away, not a victory. But a, a judgment mm -hmm. of, of the, what happened. But that's such a mind-blowing idea of control. Or, or, you know, it's like some intuitive... Uh, but in reality, are were you in control? Reality. Well, yeah, because I didn't yeah. uh, do something harmful. Yeah, you could have continued in the direction you were in. Right. That would have been destructive to all, both of them. You mean to both me and my dad? And you put father and mother. Right. But the, but the conclusion you came to, that's what's doing it. So what conclusion did you get when you walked away from that event with your father? I, I, I was... I, like I thought there was something wrong with me. Yeah. Like that I was... Uh, I don't know, uh, that I have a short fuse or that I'm a, yeah. mm -hmm. that I'm uh, dangerous. Yeah. That was very dangerous, <laughs> yeah. So you got to bottle that up. But I'm, I'm still not convinced that, I'm, that I'm not dangerous. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Because it's like, it's... No, see... Um, uh, like, I wasn't aware of myself doing that. But then I was aware. You were aware. At that moment. Sure. So how did I get across the couch? <laughs> <laughs> or does it even matter? Yeah. Hmm. So... See, we want to know how these two events shaped the present dilemma, right? Which is, well, cheat a bit, finish pretty fast, right, as soon as possible, and cut your way through things, right? This, this is what's happened. You start with a vision of perfection, of doing something perfectly, as you mentioned with wood, then this state comes in. Yeah. And we want to know, given these two scenes, why does that bring about this state which you decide, okay, from now on I'm not going to do it expertly. I'm going to find a way to cheat, to finish as soon as possible, uh, make shortcuts, right? And they're all wrong, right? I think it has... And it goes back to these words. Science skim over, sloppy, right, surface level. I think it... it Go ahead. ...has something to do with time. It, I think I, I... In these... Like in the situation with the wood, I, I set myself a, 
time limit. Like, I expect to do finish half of the project by, you know, five by five o'clock. And if I haven't gotten to that point, then I'll try to make up the time by cheating. There's like a very rigid idea of how I imagine it's going to go, mm -hmm. how I feel that it... Yeah, instead of questioning your, your standard of time and what it takes in terms of time. Right. But you don't question that. No. It's like this weird restricting... Uh, dynamic. Um, it's a, it's a, it's ca it's a, a very ridiculous kind of standard. Well, let's try this. If you were looking, how should you have dealt with this scene with your mother? What should you have done? Same thing with your father. You know he's barking at you, he's pushing, right, insulting you. What would be the, what would be, come on, ideally, in both cases? Well, now it, they look good. Now I'm looking at them differently, and they actually look like I did well in those scenes. Yeah, but uh, uh, you waited until it was very severe before you acted. That's true. You waited for it to be very, very severe before you acted with your father. Yeah. Well... Uh, it's a time. You're back right there, it's a time. Oh yeah, time. Yeah, like I could have acted sooner in both. I could have walked away from my dad. Yeah. Could have left the house sooner. Yeah. And I could have opened the door for my mom. Sure. And dealt with it. Hey, let me tell you why I don't want to go to school or the Islamic school. Yeah. Time. There is a um, there is a theme of waiting for the last moment to do something that I'm that I've explored before a little bit. Well, yeah, both both the very things are that. Yeah, like it has to reach a boiling point for me to take action. Yeah. No, then you tolerate all kinds of things up to that point. Right. We don't know why. Even though we moved from a seven-year-old scene to 16, what happened to the seven-year-old scene? I didn't, um, I didn't give you one. Yeah, that's why I was asking. Um, you mentioned seven years. Which, which state of mind am I looking for? <laughs> I don't know. You mentioned seven, and then yeah. you moved to sixteen. So I, I, I was, I thought it was Islamic school, and I went to Islamic school when I was seven, but it wasn't Islamic school. So, scratch the seven. Okay. Then, would, would you tell me the earliest scene you could remember then? When you were 16? How old were you with the father saying? Um, they were around the same time, 16, 17. Yeah. <coughs> See, if we're looking for the issue of time, it's, it's already at work there. 
who tolerated it longer than you should have, waited for the last minute. Where did you pick that up? Time. My mom. Hmm? My mom. Let me hear it. Well, that's... She does that all the time. It's just... Does it's what all the time? When... Um, oh, yeah. Well, well, like, there's a... There's a... She has a plan to go somewhere at 4 o'clock. And... Um, she tries to to squeeze in all these other tasks before mm -hmm. her departure, mm -hmm. um, and she keeps squeezing more and more things in. And then when it's time to go, she's in a rush and she's forgetting things and mm -hmm. she can't find uh, keys mm -hmm. and she's getting angry at my dad and. <laughs> She's uh, she's like a tornado. Uh, so I was always watching that. See, the question is, what did you conclude? What did you walk away feeling about yourself? as you were watching her go through all of those scenes. That's the issue. in a way, all of those nine scenes could be your mother. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No. If so, choose your model. That needs to be questioned. In each one of these nine stages, you are in a certain state of mind. Is that state of mind you exhibited all the way through similar to her state of mind when she tries to get somewhere or do something in terms of time? Yeah, it is. Hmm? It is, yeah. And also, always her quality of work diminishes the further along hmm. it goes. See, if that's the case, and that's a milieu, that's the background that you had to live in, therefore yeah. it's not going to be any specific scene. Yeah, it's very... But this is a way of life she's exhibiting. Yep. And so that's a milieu problem, right? Yeah. And milieu problems, that's where people end up imitating. But it looks like in imitating it, you reached a crisis in both places and you shifted. And acted out.
Well, if you're imitating her, well, that's what happens when you have a milieu, tend to act like whoever it is that has that continuous pathologos type of way of being, and you absorb that, and you tend to imitate them in a certain way. And if, if so, then, if, if the key element in here is time, then you're going to have a problem with time. And if you're saying, that's what's behind, hey, I want the idea of perfection, I'm working with something on wood, Right, but then, at a certain point then, uh-oh, I start uh, looking for shortcuts, uh, uh, find different ways of treating to finish as soon as possible, and... Yeah. Mm. That's totally my mom. And this is like mom. Yeah. Right. Mm. And that keeps you on the surface level. Hmm. So, yeah. What do you think you should tell her? I understand you had talks with your father. Yeah. How about your mother? I talked with both of them. How did she do? But I didn't, this, I wasn't talking about this issue. Oh, what would happen if you were to address that issue? Uh, that would be that would be good. That would be great. I mean, yeah, it would. Um, See, that's difficult to confront someone on their whole style of being. <clears throat> if that's a milieu of milieu is a continuous way of being that doesn't seem to interrupt. But if you were to address that, what would you tell her? I would tell her take your time <laughs> I, I, I would say um, you are it's it's ve it's very um, kind of general <laughs> sure. She's general. She is general. Well, it's and a general way of being. Surface level way of being. Uh, <laughs> why are you so basic? <laughs> Good. Um, what is the crime? Well, it's it's a very it's kind of a very fundamental Go ahead. problem. Like, I would say you you're always like you you're doing a million things on a surface level and achieving n not achieving depth in any of them. And what is it due to whatever project she was going to do? Everything is. Mediocre. Then are you going to say something about that too? So put the two together. Then what would you say? I'll say that this is in every part of your life. And you're like a... a, a you're like a watered-down watered, watered down version of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's like diluted. Yeah. By the way, um, if you do ever have a talk with her, you might ask her who she is imitating. Oh, I know the answer to that. My grandpa, my grandma. There you are. She just passed away. <laughs> yeah. You see? Yeah, absolutely. That. She, she, Thank you. Yeah, my my grandma broke her arm running to get the telephone. 
<laughs> At like 85 years old. It, it never healed. Whoa. Oh, By any chance, do you happen to recall what you were doing in each of those scenes before your mother or father started their singing? Well, with my mom, I was very obviously standing up against The bullshit and the no, thing. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm looking more for like, um, what were you doing in your room before? You know what I'm saying? Like, were you? Uh, mm -hmm. You mean like, what was the trigger? Like, some high state of mind? Well, th that's what I mean. I, okay. I thought it was the standing up for myself that did it. And yeah, but standing up for yourself is only in uh, response to her act at the door, right? No, no, no. My standing up for myself caused her to behave that way. Okay, but she had to come to the door in the first place, right? Well, it was... Um, it's the day of Ramadan, and one must go to the mosque <laughs> on Ramadan. Uh, and I told her, like, earlier that day that I'm not going to do it. She's like, you're going to do it. And then I'm like, I'm not going to do it. But then when I locked the door, I see, okay. that, you know. So. And then with your dad, when you're sitting and on the floor? With, with my dad, um, but wait, does that do anything, what I said about my mom? No, it's, it's possible there's more, but I just didn't want to push you on it right now. Well, I mean, one of the like questions in the dream is who he is, right? Mm. Who he is, where he is, what his goal are. Right there, he was... Very sure. Yeah, well, that in itself, and it's a good answer, right? And, and uh, I, all, all I know is I don't want to go to this bullshit, right? Yeah, I'd rather look at the wall than, <laughs> than go to that thing. So, yeah, that's a good point. If we take that for an answer, that in itself is saying it doesn't really matter what I do, it's, it's going to be better than this, <laughs> and I'm putting my foot down. Yep. <laughs> how, about, how about with your dad? Do you happen to. I, mean, I was just curious. Do you happen to remember anything that you were doing or. Or, or, well, I don't want to lead you. Or, or is the answer the same, essentially? I think it's actually the same. Because he was upset at me for having done or said something. And that's what triggered him into what I call barking. A barking fit. Um, I don't remember what that was, though, but I, I think it's... The same dynamic, the same me standing up for myself or mm -hmm. doing something that I r really want. Or mm. So there's, there's, a, um, there's a showstopper with any project, right? Or to put it in a positive way, that's clearly what you need to finish any project, is that kind of firmness or that kind of resoluteness, yeah? Hmm. Hmm. You mean you mean that sarcastically? No, no. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Uh, you made it, in both of those scenes. You've made up your mind, right? Yeah. And what they're bumming out about your answer is what they're bumming sure. out about is not necessarily the content, is it here? but the fact of it. That's the fact that you are saying, I have, I have like a uh -uh, I'm drawing a line here, and I know right. who I am. I know Which one is right? That it's like, in itself is what they're running out. They're both right? Yeah, it's like the point is to break me. Where's yours? Yeah. But to break my resolution. Yes. Resolution. You didn't write and it down. And that state of mind that's would also change. be necessary. There's one word. As well, would it not? No. That's, uh, yeah, okay. It's true. Right. Which with is excellence. With excellence. Finish the project with excellence. With excellence. Yeah, nice Which is what they don't have. Right. Except when it's to make me not have it. <laughs> right, Ramadan too. It's a month-long fasting period that ends in E. Okay. So was it the first day of Ramadan? This is curiosity. Or I think was it, it is the e first day that. The end? Oh, sorry. Um, no, no. If there are more it's questions. No, I, that was that okay. last was just it's curiosity. Day, right? So major event. Everybody does it differently. Ah. All Muslims do it differently. Ah. Bosnians.
I think go on the first there. Okay, uh, we all go from our The APPA website, American Philosophical Practitioners Association, has a new website. And one of the items they have on it is one of the films they made of me on uh, New Thinking Aloud. So I saw it tonight for the first time. (laughs) So I didn't sit through it, by the way, but it's up. So in case you want to see it. I'm going to go home. I'm really tired. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Charge. Okay, so um, to, to give a background to the dream, I used to be really into mountain biking, right? I used to be into mountain biking, right? Okay, so it has to do with this dream. So uh, the, it's, a, it's a very short scene. The uh, Barbara and uh, Mrs. Grimes, uh, and I believe perhaps you, are uh, all excited about this new bike that you got, right? Who got the bike? You. Me. Okay. They're saying, Mr. Did, have you seen Mr. Grimes' bike? Have you seen his new bike, right? And they're all excited about it. And I am walking by uh, and hear it. And then uh, I see see you and your new bike, and you have, uh, uh, it's got these big, fat, white tires, kind of like a a beach bike. And uh, for some reason, okay, this is where, where I get confused. I get on a mountain bike, and I look at you, and I ride right by, right? And, I, and, I, and I'm not really going anywhere. And there, uh, so that's the dream, right? That's good. Okay. What's it like? Well, it's just a, it's kind of a confused state. I, uh, there was maybe like some jealousy involved, right? Like you had, like you, I was, I was into mountain biking and I was a big, Bike, uh, bicyclist dude, and uh, there you were getting attention because you had a new bike, and uh, but there's a part of me that was like that wanted to talk to you and look at your bike, and uh, I was like interested and. Uh, and I just rode right by instead, like... What stood up in mind? Um, it's, it's a... I don't know, it's a... Conf- uh, it's a... Hmm? I can't put... Uh, it's, sure. There's a couple different states of mind, well, right? I'm... There's one that seems to be a jealousy. There's one that seems to be uh, perhaps... Uh, a uh, uh, between a fear and a respect for you that keeps me from uh, approaching you. Uh, but there, there, it's like what, there's a what it is. There, it's like a uh, a doubt, like a. Um, like I wanted to, but I didn't, right? And both of those, th- that uh, fear and respect and jealousy both played a part in me uh, riding right by you. And you gave up your goal. But yeah, my the, the there there yeah there was an inherent desire to approach you, to talk, to, to talk or yeah, to. So this interfered. Finish it. Uh, yeah, 
It interfered with a uh, with the uh, connection or relation mm -hmm. to relate. Uh, I guess all both of both three of those state of might have an ego right involved mm -hmm. in it, right? Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. kept me from mm -hmm. my natural uh, desire or instinct or just yeah my. My goal, ego. See, but you wanted to talk to this guy, but then you focused on the bike and the white tires and there's a mountain bike, right? So you hopped on it and rode right by. Right. And this is the background, is that there was something that kept you from directly relating, which is a sense of jealousy and fear and respect tying together, right? It keeps you from approaching, right? Uh -huh. So, uh, this, is, this is undermining your goal. Yeah, yeah, and, and when I drove, like, when I... Uh, went by. Went by, there was this like feeling of loss, you know, like I lost an opportunity. Or I was, and, but it was too late, you know. I was just kind of like going with the, my image and my ego, and uh, right. Well, you know what you got to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, it made made a lot more sense now. I, I, uh, I've been, I haven't had a lot of dreams. I had this one. I just kind of stuck. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You know what you got to get. You know what you got to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> I got an ego. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing to get rid of. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> My dad and I are staying at a hotel. And as he's sleeping, I sneak out of the room and go to the parking lot. It's night. Probably around, um, around midnight because no one is out there. Say it again. It's probably around midnight because no one is out there in the parking lot. I get in our car, and I can tell it's new because it has a lot of fancy buttons and new features. And curiously, I start pressing random ones. There's this one button that pulls out a soda to my lips with a mechanic claw. Yeah. <laughs> um, one button pulls a soda to my lips with a mechanic claw. I'm thinking, <laughs> like, wow, this is really cool. And then there's a big button between the driver and passenger seat. And when I press it, the car starts to move in reverse at maybe 15 miles per hour. I'm sitting with my legs crossed like some meditating position. So my feet aren't near the pedals at all. The car is driving itself backwards, and it comes really close to crashing into other vehicles in the hotel building. I'm really worried, and I'm scared to crash in and be responsible for wrecking a new good car. But I can't move my feet to the brake. I feel so nervous, I'm paralyzed. The car comes really close to the hotel, and I just know it's going to crash. But then, it starts to slow down and drives away from it. And I'm really relieved. But I noticed that my hands were gripping the wheel and directing the car. Have I been doing this the entire time, I wonder? I mean, I assume that I had. 
and I feel a slight sense of both amazement and confidence in acting so quickly and efficiently, even though I didn't really realize what I was doing and assumed the worst. I'm able to move my feet now, but I don't want to put my foot on the brake. I want to drive around. And I don't know too much about driving yet, and I'm a little nervous, so I go slow. I'm swerving, but I tell myself that it's okay. Just as I'm getting the hang of it, I see a police car drive by. And since I'm driving without a license, I worry. So I drive the other way, up a steep hill. Now I don't feel worried anymore, and I realize that and wonder, well, shouldn't I be? But as I reach the top of the steepy road, the land ahead is bright and sunny, with a flat road ahead. Now there's grassy fields on the sides of the road, so I park the car to explore. On the left, I see an old white barn with a smaller stored shack next to it. I hear my dog bark and see him run after me. He followed me here, and that made me really happy. So I go to climb the fence in front of the shack and bring my dog, Mango, up on the roof. He's really light, so I'm thinking, that's weird. But I climb on, nonetheless, onto the roof. Now I can see a patio, but only partly because the barn is blocking it. I look to the top of the barn and see it's slanted, so there's a good chance I'll slip off if I try to get on top of it. I feel defeated, almost. I really wanted to be there. Do that part again. Go ahead. I feel... Choose it. I feel defeated. Defeated. Go ahead. Because I really want to be... Yeah. I really want to be on top of the barn. I look back at Mango, and he's smiling at me, which makes me feel way better. I look at the barn again and notice a water pipe that isn't too far out of reach, and realize I could use that to keep steady. So I grab it and pull myself on the roof, only to realize it's very flat. I look at where Mango is on the shed, who's now wagging his tail, and realize it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Then I hear a voice from below me. Now I can see the beautiful patio, which I've forgotten about. I feel like I've seen it before and notice a house directly across from where I'm standing that looks familiar too, but I don't know why until I see an Arabian man on top of the roof of the house that's looking at me. I've dreamt this exact scene before, only I remember being afraid of the man and feeling like I was in danger or in trouble. Mm -hmm. I realize that I'm dreaming and we smile at each other. I feel relieved to see him now, like he's a good friend of mine. Do you that part again? Just read it again. Okay. With the radio, saw the radio. Oh, okay. I, um, I feel like I've seen this place before, and I notice a house directly across from where I'm standing that looks familiar too, but I don't know why it does until I see an Arabian man oh. on top of the roof of the house looking at me. I've dreamt this exact scene before, only I remember being afraid of the man and feeling like I was in danger or in trouble. I realize that I'm dreaming now, and we smile at each other. I feel relieved to see him now, like he's a good friend of mine. I purposely slide off the roof and land into a bush of flowers of beautiful, vibrant colors. Mm -hmm. Mango jumps off the shack and runs to greet the man, wagging his tail and licking his face. Then the man helps me out of the bush and picks a white flower for me, and I put it in my hair. What was that like at that moment in the dream? It was like... I was seeing somebody who I've known for years, and I was really happy to see him. Um, among happy times, how happy was this? It was just... A little bit? A lot of it? A lot of it, because... Hi? Yeah, because yeah. I knew I was dreaming, yeah, and... Yeah, yeah. What's that like? Talk about it. Knowing that I was dreaming? Yeah, in the dream. Well... I always like when I do that because then I, um, I know I can control where the dream goes and I know that I can have it end happily. Mm -hmm. And um, It's a very positive state, isn't it? Yeah. Would you like to get back there? I would. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, he's wearing a Saudi Arabian style headdress and robe, all blue with gold details. And then he says, we've been waiting for you, come on. I've never met him before, but since I was dreaming, I knew that this was good. I felt secure and knew that this wouldn't end badly. So we go into his house and enter into some kind of living room or dining room. There's a, a round table and a group sitting on the floor. There's the Easter Bunny, 
a beautiful woman with light blue skin and other people who I don't remember what they look like. These people all look at me with a warm smile, and I feel like we've met before, though I can't say where. I sit with them, and the blue woman says, Are you enjoying the stream? The group all laughs, and I realize they're all characters of dreams I've had before. I laugh and say, Very much so. She smiles and nods at me. I'm enjoying this atmosphere so much. What was that like? See, another good one. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I mean... They were all characters of dreams that um, yeah. ended really badly for me. Yeah. And now I'm seeing them and they're all smiling like um, they were happy to see me. Yeah. And I just feel appreciated. And, like um, that's, another, that's another happy state. Yeah. 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 How do they compare? I'm not scared of them anymore. And it's like I almost feel welcome to be there. <coughs> Which one is? Which one is happier? I definitely think um, when I'm in that room and I see all those characters of those dreams, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I realize that those dreams weren't as bad as I thought because now they're um, mm -hmm. they're happy to see me. Uh -huh. um, I ask, can you think of other dreams you've had while you're dreaming? I mean, it felt odd to do so, so I guess I asked to be reassured that it was okay to do. And the blue woman says gently, of course. See, what does that do to you? Right? You're in a dream, reflecting on the dream. Yeah. What's, what's that like? I was thinking of these characters, and I was just thinking, like, these dreams ended so badly, why is it good now? And then I'm like, wait, I'm thinking of a dream while I'm in a dream. Mm -hmm. and that seemed weird to do. and I, I mean, it didn't seem like a bad thing to do necessarily, like no. something I shouldn't do, That's but right. it just seemed odd to do because I... Never mm -hmm. really reflected on dreams while I'm dreaming. I've had dreams where I knew I was dreaming, but yeah. this was but that's just an interesting state of mind. Yeah, it? like a dream matrix kind of. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. Um, so, like that's another interesting state of mind, isn't it? Yeah. Right. I feel like I'm questioning a lot. Yeah. 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 Where does that go if you develop that ability? To question. Yeah, in the dream, waking up to the fact that you're dreaming. Just um, a really comfortable state. Yeah, it's a at settling, peace. Yeah. yeah, yeah. These are very interesting states of mind. They are. Yeah. And um, after I ask that question, the blue woman says, "Of course," with a knowing kind of smile. Yeah. And next, I wanted to ask, which one should I think of first? But before I could say it out loud, they all laugh and I awaken. Is that last part? Come on, read it again. <laughs> Come on, I want it. Go ahead. I wanted to ask which one should I think of first. Yes. But before I could say it out loud, they all laugh and I awaken. And, and what did you, come on, what did it leave you with and what state? Um, you had a good question, didn't you? I wanted to know which dream I should think of first. Um, just where to direct me. What did it do to you? What did it do? Um, the last scene in the dream. What was that like? Well, they all laughed. I didn't get to ask my question, so um, it left me kind of wondering. Let's see. You could respond to it in a whole bunch of different ways, but what was it like seeing that they were laughing at you? Was it okay? Or? It was okay because I felt like they were doing it just because, not laughing at me necessarily, but kind of... Oh, that's good. Yeah, but, but kind of... Not laughing with me, but just laughing at the fact that I was so curious about it. Yeah, what's that like? Come on, <laughs> come on, that's another one. It made me kind of laugh at myself too yeah, because... Yeah. What was it like? Here, you're laughing at yourself now. <laughs> come on. I mean, it felt good to do it because... Um, like right after I asked that question, I, yeah. I felt like it was a stupid question to ask yeah. because of course you could, but I just need to be reassured that you could. Mm. Look, you're breaking through, right? <laughs> you're breaking through and getting in beautiful states of mind. Hey, you're doing well, aren't you? I guess so. <laughs> There's only one problem in it, the first scene. The first scene? Yeah. What was oh. it like? Seeing your dad asleep and you 
got out of the house. What was that like? That's all I need to know. What I have was no like? idea why I did that, what intrigued it. It just, he was asleep and I decided I wanted to go see the new car. Yeah. Was it okay or? I felt like it was a bad thing to do because I was sneaking out and he was asleep and he didn't know about it. I should. But I didn't want to wake him up and ask him to go drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's some worry in here in the beginning <clears throat> about your ability to drive. Well, it starts driving itself backwards and, and I feel And then you paralyzed. start going backwards. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't move and I felt but, like the hey, car was going to crash. Then the dog came in and changed the scene, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> he tends to do that. <laughs> so, like, after this, there's a big shift, isn't there? Yeah. And you get through these beautiful states. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like when the dog was barking? Come on. Uh, it, well, I have a really close relationship huh? with that. I love that dog to death, so yeah, it's just... Son, you love the dog, right? He, so was, what was, it like? he was wagging his tail, laughing. Not laughing, but he had that smile on his face, and right. <laughs> it made me feel really good. I right. mean, comforting almost. Yeah, yeah. company, right? Yeah. So from this point on, all the good things follow. Right. Beautiful, beautiful dream. Thank you. You're doing well. <laughs> Guess so. See, and you see, even though <clears throat> you didn't have the experience to drive or the knowledge of it, yet everything worked out okay. <laughs> All right. Good. I like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Did you in, hey, did you um, on a, two nights ago. Yeah, you're not on a nice <laughs> journey. Yeah. 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 That, you know, you pointed out there's a problem in the beginning, yeah. right? So, no, no, I asked if there was. Oh, if there was, right? Yeah, but you pointed out the beginning anyway, yeah. right? Then, I don't know, I just kind of, just right now, in this moment, I was looking. I've looked at the dream before, and I'm looking at it now, and, you know, she uh, snuck out by right. herself, right? Yeah. And then uh, went through all these trials of insecurity, of not of fearing she wasn't able to do it, right? but then she was able to do it, right? And the dog saved her. And the dog saved her, but just the very beginning, the fact that yeah. she snuck out by herself, right? without my permission, right. right? And without the knowledge. And without the knowledge. Well, there's a, there's a uh, theme in my mind of uh, independence, right? Like, like she took sure. charge of... That's why I asked, like, what state of mind were you in when you left the house? Um, curious. Pardon? Curious. Curious. Open or? Yeah, open to yeah, the possibility. So positive. Yeah. Even though you're right, we're sneaking out. But, but she, it, she, she, it was her initiative. Yes. It, yes whether we were sneaking out or right, not, it was. Right. And it ended well. Did it. And right. look at them. Right? Yeah. Maybe she knows a thing or two. Huh? Good. <laughs> 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 Love it. Regardless of what you think, we're trying to do. Beautiful. See, your mind is on your side now. See? And that's such an important thing. Because sometimes people have nothing but nightmares. The mind isn't on their side. So your mind is on your side. Congratulations. Pleasure. Well, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Is mm -hmm. it on your side? Yeah, that's what it means. Yeah, yeah it's a very important. Or maybe we're on our mind's side. Because even when you have a nightmare... Ah, a nightmare, that would be... Well, even then your mind hey, is still... A nightmare is really, in dream analysis, uh, a milkman's horse. <laughs> right, Barbara? Yes, I, I've often heard that.